Greetings, warlords. Let's take a look at my Berber Muslim warband. This is the most recent warband I've built. I built it for the Saga Thursday Patreon warband challenge. So it started back in June of 2023. I painted essentially one point per month. So at the start of the year, I've got myself a brand new army. We'll take a look at the warriors first, which make up the bulk of the army. All the figures are Reconquer designs, 3D prints. The warriors are the medieval Moorish spearmen for the most part, with some of Ben Yusuf's Black Guard mixed in. This is really the first time I've worked extensively with 3D prints. I did not print them myself. They came from a few different sources. Originally, I had a local buddy lined up. He was going to do everything for me, and that sort of fell through halfway through the month of the first challenge. Shout out to Terry down in Chicago. He was able to quickly print out the first unit of warriors and get them to me with enough time to, to get them finished by the end of the month for the first month of the challenge. The rest of these came from Etsy, so two different stores. I was happy with the guy in the States, but he temporarily closed uh, for a month or two, so I had to get some stuff shipped to me from overseas. I did notice a difference with the prints on that second guy. There was weird kind of like texture lines, like you're looking at an elevation map, you know? And even after all the painting and layers and stuff, you can still kind of see that on a few of these. And I don't care for it much. Just in general with the 3D prints, I think they're fine. You know, every material has their pros and cons. But overall, they seem pretty brittle. I replaced all the spears with wire. And sometimes if I drop them or during a game... I actually haven't played these yet, but I let my buddies run them. They'd apply some pressure to the spear or something when grabbing them, and like the hand would just explode. So if you look closely, some of these guys might have some weird hand paws. The other thing is I paint on a shelf, you know, about a foot over a desk. And sometimes I drop models, and it happened multiple times where I would drop one of these, and they would just kind of break off at the ankles. So I was able to glue them back because the brakes were like perfect, but I've never seen that happen with plastic or resin models before. So just beware if it's your first time working with 3D prints. There is some light conversion work with the shields. These guys come with a pretty large, like almost like a Pavis style shield that I thought was too big, covered up most of the model. Didn't use it just from a aesthetics point. I worked in a few plastic shields from the Gripping Beast Arab kits. And there's also some metal bits in there. I had a metal Muslim force I picked up on eBay. And there was a few shields left over after I ended up scrapping those. I believe they're artisan designs. Let's move on to the painting here. Not quite the same variety in colors as you'll see with the Heathen Army. This is definitely more of a speed paint job, I would say. Limited colors, limited palette. It's just black and white. And then there's four main secondary colors, along with a fifth one I'd kind of use for leather. I had a primum white. Do a black speed paint for the black to start. Speed paint for the skin. And then work in a mix of the five secondary colors. You can see a variety of geometric designs that I did on the shields. And once those were all base coated, I hit the entire model with a very thick and goopy oil wash. It was mostly black with a little bit of purple mixed in. Always got to have that purple. Let them dry 15, 30 minutes and then wiped off a lot of it with Q-tips and makeup sponges. After that, I would actually continue using kind of oil paints and brushes to touch up the black, manually get more black and purple in the crevices, and then I'd use kind of a shadowy bluish gray to manually do highlights. But you're gonna see there's actually quite a variety here in the blacks. Some of them just got the speed paint and the oil wash, and I thought it looked good as is. 
Some got some extra shadows, but I thought the highlights were good as is. Some got oil paints, shadows, and highlights. And then after everything was dried, I actually went back with some acrylic, further touching up the black and the highlights. So pretty drawn out on some, pretty quick on others, but overall, you know, it was pretty fun actually. Anytime you use oil paints, it's pretty fun. It was pretty similar with the whites. After cleaning up the oil wash, I do some highlights using white oil paint and then do another highlight with acrylic once everything had dried. For the secondary colors, it was pretty easy. After the oil wash had dried and everything, I would mix in some pale skin with the original color for a first highlight. And then once I had done all those highlights, I would use just pale skin by itself as a final highlight on every one of those colors. So that final step went pretty quick. I just use that pale skin on the pink, the orange, the yellow, etc., etc. For the bases, I use AK Sandy Desert. This is a pumice-like material. I did dry brush it with the ivory color and used a few different tufts. On the tufts, I went back and dry brushed them with like a yellowish white color. Really like that neon kind of yellow look. Contrasts well with their black on the models. So most of these warriors were painted in the first three months of the challenge. Usually I'd start them in the last week and invariably run up against the midnight deadline, but I did finish them. After front loading everything, I moved on to some hearth guard. So having just four models to paint in a month was very nice. These four figures are from the Moorish Heavy Infantry set. Some of these guys are pretty lightly armored and some are just encased from head to toe, as we shall see when we look at a couple character models. Three of the four I chose did have chain mail. Painting that followed the same process, laid on a base coat, oil wash, but probably a little bit more elbow grease to finish them up in the end with a little dry brushing, highlights, extra washes to get shadows, stuff like that. I gave these guys golden helmets to help differentiate them from the standard warriors a little bit. And their shields are a little more elaborate too, I'd say. Using the same heavy infantry kit, I pulled two guys to be heroes. So the first I did was this super heavy armored guy. He definitely looks like a special fighter, but I don't know, I just didn't think he really matched the rest of the force being so heavily armored. So I ended up doing a second guy on foot and he's kind of more Similar to the regular guys, he does have some golden armor to differentiate him a little bit, along with a purple shield. So if I want to use a warlord on foot, I've got it. And that heavily armored guy, he'll just make an extra hero for new feud scenarios, whatever. So one of the months was just painting these two guys, which was pretty easy. But for the last month, I saved the ultimate challenge, which was the camel rider so absolutely one of the main reasons to build this army was to get some sweet sweet camels in the fray getting these assembled and ready to paint was a pretty pretty big challenge in and of itself so they do come with rope rein bits that should be attached leading from the camel's head all the way up to the rider but these seemed way too brittle to even attempt putting them on. They would just end up breaking. Some of the tails broke off, had to be replaced with green stuff. Some tassels broke off on one side, so I just broke off the corresponding one on the other side so they would match. Gluing the guys on, I thought for several of these, there was a pretty huge gap in between the pillow and the you know, the camel itself. So I went back with green stuff and kind of filled that in. These are originally javelin arm troops. So I clipped javelins from the left hand and on the right put in a spear instead. And one of the arms I had to reposition. I can't remember exactly why I did that, but one of them has a little green stuff around his shoulder. So that took quite a bit of work. 
on the painting side, you know, a lot of <laughs> efforts continued with the free hand on the blankets in addition to the shields. It just took a long time to finish these guys. And this was the one month I did not meet the deadline. So these were in December. So the deadline was December 31st, New Year's Eve. Every other month I was painting on the last day of the month, but it wasn't going to happen this year with New Year's. So didn't meet the deadline, but about maybe a week, 10 days later, so January 7th or 10th, I ended up getting these completely done. And there was a little bit of extra credit with this one. I had the four hearth guard and then a fifth camel rider to use as the warlord mounted on a camel, which probably is going to be the default warlord most of the time. Gave him a sword from, I think, the Moorish heavy infantry kit had an extra sword or something and then gave him a big purple shield so that rounds out the army at this time i definitely want to expand it but i gotta get some games in first and i don't really have any idea when that'll be it was kind of an extra painting challenge for myself but the problem is i don't have any extra gaming time to play this extra war band that i built so for expansion, I do want to get some archers painted, at least 12, maybe 16, maybe more. I can use them as levy for a Saracen's warband if I saw fit. And I, I haven't given up on archers for the Mutatawiya. I think some folks have, but I want to give them a shot. I want to get some crossbowmen done. There's a nice Moorish crossbowmen unit done by Reconquer Designs for a Moorish variant of the warband and some actual kind of normal cavalry is going to go along with that. So a black card came with a imam type model dude with a book. So I'll probably paint that guy up as a priest or something. And some people swear on two units of hearth guard on camels. <sighs> yeah, I don't know, man. At, at this time, I need a little bit of a break before I would consider doing another four pack of camels. So in the big scheme of things, I would say I'm about halfway done with a grand Muslim war band. So at some point, there probably will be a part two to this show and tell, but not anytime soon. Definitely a couple of years out. Now, if you like what you've seen, I'm adding some pictures to my Instagram link in the description. I'll be getting those out over the next week or two. If you want to see a painting video about painting these guys, let me know. I don't have anything done previously, nor is anything really planned right now, but I could maybe work that in. If you got questions about anything else, definitely let me know. And as always, guys, best of luck in all your battles, be they on or off the tabletop. Check you later. Saga! like to see more saga content consider joining the heathen army over on patreon or popping on down to the saga doors day discord server links below thanks guys